Hi there, Mark here. I'm here today to talk to you about text messaging. Oh, where, where, where are you going? Come back. I promise you this will be interesting for Android users. And if you want to skip straight to the bit where I do the tutorial, skip to this part of the video and get there a lot quicker. Um, so for 20 years, text messaging has been really useful. For the last few years, it's not been. We all know the limitations of text messaging. 160 characters, don't even try to send a picture or a video because it gets sent in poor quality and you get charged with a privilege. Generally speaking, Android users only use text for sending messages to older relatives with dumb phones. Nowadays, we have free apps that can send free high quality pictures and videos, apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and Instagram. Despite having those apps, it's estimated that we send 8 trillion text messages every year, trillion with a T. Those three messaging apps are all owned by Facebook. Google has tried to keep up the popularity with those, but they haven't been able to. They've tried and tried again, but failed. Google's last attempt at taking on the messaging world was called Allo. This was a great fun little app. It was designed to be mobile only at launch and took a long time to add basic features that other apps already had. After two years, Allo had less than 50 million users. Its main rivals had more than a billion. This is what I find interesting. If you're in charge of Google, what would your next move be to try to keep up with Facebook? How would you compete with one of the biggest companies in the world? With billions of users and infinite resources, Google had three main options. So the first option they had was to continue adding features to Allo and hope that users eventually start using it. They've been doing this for two years with little success. The second option would be to scrap Allo and start from scratch with yet another new messaging app. The problem with this is that they've already done this time and time again. People have got tired of recommending Google messaging apps to their friends, only for the service to be discontinued a few years later. The third option was to go the Apple route and create an iMessage alternative for Android. iMessage is the built-in way to send messages on iOS devices. So on Apple, if you send a text message to another iPhone user, then Apple allow you to send full high quality photos and videos with no charge. If you send a text message to an Android user, then it falls back to being a standard text message. Apple took iPhone to iPhone text messaging away from the phone carriers. Google are in a very different situation. As only Apple make iPhones, Google rely on their partners to help build the Android platform. If Google went the Apple route and went over the carrier's head, the carrier would lose a service that they make money for. Google has to do this without alienating any of the hundreds of powerful companies that have a stake in the smartphone market. A pissed off carrier could easily make Bing the default search option on a new Android phone to cost Google millions. In April 2018, Google let us know what the next steps were going to be. They were going to pause development on the Allo messaging app and get the carriers to upgrade text messaging. They moved the award winning Allo design team along with features like the Google Assistant, Smart Reply and GIF searches onto the Android texting app Messages. It made sense for Google to get all of their best features from Allo, push them into the messaging app because the messaging app is where the users are. But of course the messaging app is still just a messaging app, right? It's still restrained to the same 160 characters per text message. This is why for many years Google has been working behind the scenes with Samsung, Microsoft and all of the mobile phone carriers to help build the next upgrade to the text messaging protocol a new universal text messaging standard called chat. This upgrade makes sending a text message more like sending a WhatsApp message. So full size photos and videos, well, any file type at all, including audio messages. You can see when the other person is typing and when they've read a message. You can type 8,000 characters per message instead of 160. And you can set up and manage group chats. Eventually, this is going to be available in your default Android text messaging app whether that's Google Messages app or Samsung's. It has the advantage over the other messaging apps that if you don't have Wi-Fi or data, you can still send text messages on your text message plan. Phone numbers are a universal standard, the one long number anyone can recite to you off by heart. As long as you have their phone number, you can send them a message. You don't have to ask the other person to download and start using another app. They could just use whatever text messaging app is built into their phone. This is the solution that brings text messaging bang up to date the reason to use text messaging over your other messaging apps. Of course, there's plenty of other reasons why text messaging should be your main messaging app on your phone. Businesses contact you over text. When you get an answer phone message, you get told by receiving a text. 
The messaging app is also tied into your phone and contacts app. If you decide it's going to be easier to talk to the person rather than send them a message, you can go straight into a phone call or a video call all in one tab. Great. So this was announced back in April 2018. So you're now wondering why the hell can't I send a high quality picture to my friend without being charged? Even though Google helped build the standard for this text messaging protocol, it was up to the carriers to actually deliver it. Dough. The carriers have dragged their feet, a few phones by a few different carriers. Google has publicly said that they're frustrated by this non-existent rollout. In June 2019, Google announced they were going to push this out to the world themselves, started with Android users in the UK and France, and hopefully to other countries throughout the year. If a carrier comes along later and wants to provide chat to their customers, then they could take over from Google. So if you're in the UK or France, or if you're one of the rare few whose carrier already supports chat, then you can opt into this now. With this France and UK Google rollout, you need to be using the Google Messaging app. To be honest, it's by far the best texting app on Android. It has a dark mode, built-in Google Assistant, multi-platform desktop app, and smart replies. I'm showing you on a Samsung phone that didn't have the messages app set as the default to show you all the steps. It should work on any Android phone that has the chat features rolled out to it. Firstly, check if you have a carrier services app. If you do, then great. Make sure it's updated. If you don't, then install it. It just helps with enabling the chat feature. Now check your Google Messaging app is up to date. If you don't have it, then install it from the Play Store. Enable any pop-ups that you see. So firstly, I'm setting the app as default, which means all my texts will pop up as notifications for the Google Messaging app. You won't get this option if Google Messages is the only texting app on your phone. Next, we get the spam protection notice. I'll get enough of that, so I'll click OK. Now I get the pop-up for chat. Basically, all the good stuff I talked about in the video earlier. Tap yes, I'm in. Stop optimizing battery usage. But if you want to know about text as soon as they come in, you need to enable this. This is a Samsung only thing, I believe. Then go to the three dots in the top right, choose settings, then go into the top option, chat features. Look under status and hopefully it'll go from verifying to connected. If you get a problem after you've done this, your phone won't connect and you get stuck on verifying, it may be that your phone has a wrong phone number in the settings. This happens when you've transferred your phone number by changing the pack code at some point. This can be fixed by going to your carrier and asking them to transfer your number to a fresh SIM. I did this myself and the app connected instantly. I've been told on Twitter that they fixed this issue by clearing the data on the messaging app and trying again. I fed this issue back to Google. I'm hoping they fix this pretty soon. When you're connected and everything's working, you can send a full size video or photo when it says chat in the bottom bar. If it says text message and you try to send a photo or video, then you may be charged by your carrier and the quality will be reduced. So no chat for iPhones yet. There's rumors that Apple are considering supporting it. I hope so. This is basically the next upgrade to text messaging, so I don't know why they wouldn't include it in iMessage. They could add it to iMessage and say that iPhone customers still get the enhanced experience. Let me know how you get on in the comments, please. I'd be interested to see if there's any workarounds or any best practices you can share to help people. Um, I'd like to see when, when this rolls out in the USA, if people can post in the comments and that. But yeah, just let me know. Thanks for listening today.